Hello, my name is Chris Mufflard. I'm a project engineer at Vico Software. Welcome to the Schedule Planner video training series level five. The aim of this vignette is to show you and teach you about the different scheduling reports and how we access them and copy and paste them to a spreadsheet. Scroll to the side navigation bar to the open schedule reports to access the various Schedule Planner report functions. Scheduling reports allow us to collate all the data into predefined reports which can assist us in presenting information at the executive level or allow us to look further into the data to assist in schedule analysis. Most reporting is used in the controlling phase. However, this is a brief intro to some of the native reports that are available to us. The first report that is automatically loaded when we open our scheduling reports is the task report by responsible person. This default report highlights all the project tasks, their start and end dates and resource types. This enables us to quickly gauge whom the responsible party is for the project tasks. Our next report is our procurement task report. This report will be covered further in the production control series, but it gives us an overview of our procurement requirements and if we are meeting those commitments. Our next report is quantities by location. We can filter this view in the settings column to isolate the target, actual and differences for both quantities and costs. We have predefined features which allow us to select quantities only, by period, costs only, and logistics where appropriate. This report provides us with an overview of where the dollars and cents are going by location. Our next report is the look ahead report. Look ahead reports give us an overview of the current and target commitments and if we're trying to need to meet those in the future. We can also filter this report by a period and use the settings to filter again by the predefined quantities, periods, costs and logistics or we can isolate certain settings if we wish to define our own customized report. Our next report is the disturbance report. Disturbance reports are a filter of our risk analysis, which will be covered in a later schedule planner level. This report highlights the sensitivity and likelihood of disturbances by task. Our next report is the float report. This is a great way to summarize the total free float from our schedule by task. Our next report is our completion report. The completion report is probably one of the best reports that we have available to us when we're tracking production. This will be further defined in the production control series. However, this does give you a comparative presentation of the target, actual, and forecasted data and the differences between that data, which you can give to your team in a very simple to use and understand report. This report also gives you an insight into the schedule trending patterns and why that information might be trending. We can break down tasks individually to find out exactly what the target actual predicted indifference in the production data by that task. Our next report is the project diary. The project diary will also be covered in the production control. However, this report collates all our diary entries that we may use by task or location. Our next report is the task report. This gives us an over overview of each of our tasks properties. Finally, we have the project report. The project report gives us a summary of all the totals for the entire project schedule. This report is very handy when providing an executive level of review for project milestones. Okay, so I really do apologize if that was a little dry, but it's important to understand the function and purpose of each report so we're clear about how we can best utilize each. We can use this to identify the bill of quantities by task, and we can use the hierarchy to break out into the activity and labor level of detail. Our final report that I'll show you today is our final report that I'll show you today is located in the log menu in the side navigation bar. Open the feasibility log. The feasibility log gives us an overview of our achievability of the schedule. Some key indicators here include the sixth question, what schedule tasks are free of dependencies? This gives us an inclination if we have completed our entire schedule with correct logic. We can also access some more interesting information, including point nine, which is how much, how much does resource use exceed or fall short of the average?
In this vignette, we have learned about the different project reports which are native to Vico's Schedule Planner, and we've also learned how we can edit and isolate the information within each of the reports and how we can export that information to a spreadsheet.